NBA Today. We had some breaking news this morning. Utah Jazz All-Star forward Lori Markkinen has signed a five-year contract renegotiation and extension that adds $220 million in new money for a total package of $238 million. The Jazz had listened on trade scenarios over recent months for Markkinen, but never were presented with an offer that caused them to seriously consider moving an all-star forward in the prime of his career at 27 years old, sources says. Now, he cannot be traded by the Jazz until next offseason because there is a six-month trade restriction after signing an extension and six months from today is the day after the trade deadline. The Warriors were one of the serious suitors to possibly acquire Markkinen this summer. It was reported that a couple of players that they did not want to move on from were Jonathan Kaminga and Brandon Pajemski. Ramona, uh, do you think that the Warriors are making the right choices with Steph now entering a season where he's going to turn 37 years old? I do. I I think they need to get him one more piece. They need to get him another score. But you cannot mortgage your entire future and depth to go get that player. And if you're and that player has to be and I and I think Laurie Markin is a great player and he would really have helped them. But there are other players out there. The Warriors are still committed to big game hunting. They just have to wait for the right time and the right place. There's a lot of situations in this league, like let's say Minnesota, where you have Carl Towns and Rudy Gobert and all these Anthony Edwards who's Max extension is going to kick in. Those teams get very expensive. There's going to be players who will have to move because of this new this new CBA and because of the financial pressures on them. And so I think if you're the Warriors, you keep those young players and you keep all your depth together because there's going to be more opportunities. You cannot just go all in with with one player. This is this is rookie hazing, right? So I come here on my first show and I got to talk <laughs> about this Warriors offseason or this disaster of offseason oh. that they've had right now. Disaster. You, disaster of offseason. Like you look at this Warriors dynasty and what they have done in the last few years. They've gotten those big games, the yeah. big game hunting, and they have reeled in the big fish. And now you have a situation where you whiff on Paul George, you lose Chris Paul, which means you lose Jordan Poole for nothing, right? And That's then you do deal. not get Laurie Markkinen. Well, you know, the, yeah, <laughs> theoretically. But you lose, you don't get yeah. Laurie Markkinen. And now you have a situation where you are trying to piecemeal something around Steph Curry because of the original sin of a few years ago where you tried to build to the future while building to the present, and it has not worked. The Warriors should get on their knees and thank everybody that Steph Curry had that game four against the Boston Celtics That is because that has saved these last few years from being a totally different narrative the way we're talking about. This has been a hard offseason. I haven't even mentioned the fact that they lost Klay Thompson, which is something that was unthinkable at the beginning of this offseason. Listen, dynasties don't last forever. You're talking about the Warriors dynasty. You're talking in past tense. The dynasty is done. It's over. It is not fair to judge this edition of Golden State based on the historic success that they've had in the past. That is in the past. They are a competitive team that got out of a record-setting luxury tax yep. bill, the, 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 a disaster is being the most expensive team in NBA history and not making the playoffs. Yep. That's a disaster. They're going to be competitive. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I do want to make a note that uh, David is friends with Stephen Curry. Well, well we just How- happened. To, I just, I just happened to root for all NBA players who graduate from Davidson College. Of course, That's you know the one that you like went to school with at the same yeah. time. Yeah, I just feel like there should be a little asterisk there, yeah. just so that everybody knows. Okay, so remember, Steph is eligible <laughs> to sign a one-year, sixty-two point six million dollar extension this summer with the Warriors. But in the grand scheme of things, David, the Warriors have the added depth but no star talent. So should he, Steph, want out of Golden State? Absolutely not. With all that said, I think that Steph Curry has built his legacy one in, in Oakland. Like he moved there from Davidson and has lived there his entire yeah. adult life. He's built so much off the court there. And part of that legacy of what he's brought there is he is one of the last players who will have his entire career with one franchise, which means a lot right now. He brought championships to there. He is synonymous with that city and with that team. I think a lot of other stars, given what has happened, may kick down that door and say, trade me somewhere else. They don't have to worry about that with Steph Curry. I mean, look, they they started this because he is their Tim Duncan. Mm-hmm. He is their Kobe Bryant. He is their Dirk Nowitzki. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's his legacy. And he should sign the extension because it's $62.5 million. And if things ever go badly there and he wants out and they want out, it will be an amicably, amicable parting. But I don't see that happening. And he deserves every penny and then some because he's the man who built Chase Center. Yeah, yeah listen, they're going to build a statue of this yes. man outside of the arena. If they haven't multiple, already. Yeah, multiple right. statues. <laughs> exactly. So there's no reason for him to want out. This is not a situation yeah. like Clay Thompson just had where he felt disrespected by the organization and, and things went sour. And look, 
again, dynasties don't last forever. The man has four championship rings. Those banners will fly forever, but he's, he's going to be on a competitive team into the twilight of his career, which Kobe Bryant was not. No. Dirk Nowitzki was not. But mm -hmm. to be the man, the face of a franchise forever, there's something and they're going to keep swinging. That. That's the all you can ask for when you're at his. What do you think is the likelihood that he wins another championship in Golden State? Slim, very okay. slim. Yeah. But you know, what, you know, but it's not well, necessary. Four time right. champion. That's a short list. That makes sense. All right. Well, hello, Dub Nation. Breaking news. It's news that I personally didn't want to hear this week, but Lori Markkinen has reportedly agreed to a contract extension with the Utah Jazz. The deal will be made official not today, Tuesday, but likely on Wednesday or shortly thereafter eliminating any possibility of Markkinen being traded during the 2024 to 2025 NBA season. This isn't the news I wanted to hear, but before we dive into everything that happened with Markkinen's contract extension, this is why you subscribe to our channel, Warriors Good News, Warriors Bad News. It doesn't matter, we still have it covered. We're bringing you videos every day on the channel, covering every trade rumor, every report, every injury news, Anything that comes out about your Golden State Warriors, we're covering it right here on the channel. So subscribe now so you never miss a thing about the dubs. Let's talk about Lori Markkinen's contract extension. The dream is over, right? We've been wanting to basically pair Lori Markkinen with Stephen Curry for the past two months, ever since the Warriors lost Paul George, and that doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Golden State hasn't made a big enough trade push with the Utah Jazz to get a deal done. Shams Charania reported the news, saying NBA All-Star Laurie Markkinen and the Utah Jazz are on the verge of agreeing to a massive long-term contract extension and signing on or after Wednesday, making him not tradable for the entire 2024-2025 NBA season. Sources tell me Trevor Jones, I believe his name is, and our Warriors guy Anthony Slater, who followed up on Sham's tweet saying that trade discussions between the Golden State Warriors and Jazz never really got serious after early July talks. The Warriors have been under the impression recently that Markkinen was planning to sign a long-term extension in Utah, so a deal was never remotely close. It appears Golden State and Utah never reached a trade framework. There were just offers thrown around, neither team was really serious about the offers they were making, and a deal was never remotely close. So all the smoke we've heard over the last month about Laurie Markkinen coming to the Golden State Warriors and Golden State wanting to get a great player like Markkinen in a trade, nothing was remotely close. It's really unfortunate, in my opinion that Golden State decided they weren't going to fully commit to Laurie Markkinen because he was the only player available that could elevate this roster to a true playoff contender. Now, would they be the favorites for the title or a true contender in the West along with Minnesota, Dallas, and OKC? Probably not, but this move would have definitely gotten you closer to that goal. You would have paired Stephen Curry with a 7-footer who shoots 40% of his 3-point attempts on 8 attempts per night, which is super high volume for Laurie Markkinen. The fact that you could have gotten probably the best fit of any player that Golden State could have possibly traded. It's really unfortunate that you look at Stephen Curry in his final years in the NBA and decide that you're not going to fully commit to trying to win his fifth championship by pairing him with one of the NBA's emerging stars who, at 27 years old, has the potential to help Stephen Curry compete now and also usher in a new era of Warriors basketball alongside the young talent that they have in Golden State. But like I said, neither side has really acted seriously on a trade here. Danny Ainge of the Utah Jazz, obviously known for being a tough negotiator, tried to get the most out of the Warriors, asking for Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Podziemski, Trace Jackson Davis, Moses Moody, the whole group of young talent that Golden State has, but Golden State never really met Danny Ainge in the middle of any potential trade. Today we had Shams Charania reporting on what Golden State's final offer for Laurie Markkinen was, and it's the offer we knew was on the table the longest as the Markkinen trade saga played out. The Warriors would get Laurie Markkinen, and the Jazz would get a deal centered around Moses Moody and basically every draft pick Golden State could offer. They had two unprotected first round picks they could have offered, as well as multiple pick swaps. They could have given the other half of the protection on the 2030 first round pick that's going to the Washington Wizards and multiple second round picks that would go to Utah in the deal. 
We knew Danny Ainge wanted a lot of draft capital, but he also wanted a star player, and Golden State decided it wasn't going to trade either of those two players, Jonathan Kuminga or Brandon Podziemski. That tells me they have a lot of faith in these guys to be able to usher in this new era of Warriors basketball and not be a bottom-of-the-table team like Stephen Curry has said out loud, that he doesn't want to be in the Western Conference. So Golden State has a lot of faith in Podziemski and Kuminga, and we'll get to those in a bit, but I want to hear from you guys about this whole Lori Markkinen saga, from the beginning to where it is today, Tuesday, August 6th. Are you upset that Golden State didn't trade for Lori Markkinen? Do you agree with me that they should have gone all out and paired him with Stephen Curry and tried to maximize the window they have in front of them? If you think so, if you're upset, type Y for yes in the comments section. If not, if you think Golden State is doing well ushering in this new era and keeping all of their young talent, type in for no below. Like I said, the young dubs need to step up. Golden State opted not to trade Jonathan Kuminga or Brandon Podziemski for Lori Markkinen, so now it's up to them to really maximize who Golden State believes they can be. Golden State is going to need Brandon Podziemski and Jonathan Kuminga badly, there's no secret about that right now. There's really no player on the market that Golden State can acquire, and if they're not going to give up one of those two guys for Lori Markkinen, they're definitely not going to give them up for any of the other players that are being rumored in trade talks. Golden State opted not to enter into trade talks for Zach Levine, they didn't really enter into trade talks for Brandon Ingram, so they're going all in on those two guys. And Shams gave us a little more clarity on what they decided to do here by not trading for Lori Markkinen. He said Utah wanted Brandon Podziemski in any theoretical deal. The Warriors were protecting Podziemski in the Markkinen talks and some other trade proposals around the league over the summer, league sources said. Listen, Brandon Podziemski, you better be a high-level player if Golden State thinks so highly of you and doesn't trade you for Lori Markkinen and other reported deals. I'm assuming Shams here is referring to the Paul George trade idea and the sign and trade deal they were trying to pull off, offering Paul George a four-year max contract. They offered Jonathan Kuminga in those talks, but there was never any mention of Brandon Podziemski, and it seems like Golden State has a lot of faith in the young point guard from Santa Clara if they're keeping him out of multiple big deals like this. And it's not hard to see why, you see the makings of a really good player in Brandon Podziemski. He only played about 26 minutes a night last year, but he still managed 9.2 points and 6 rebounds in 26 minutes a night, which is really good for a 6 feet 4 inches point guard. You're looking at almost 10 rebounds a night on a per 36 minute basis and obviously becoming a very good facilitator. This offseason, he really ran the show for the Warriors summer league roster and was the primary point guard and facilitator for the Team USA Select, so expect those assist numbers to increase as well. And then, solid efficiency for a rookie, shooting 38% from beyond the arc, but I expect him to make a massive leap and play a big role right away. Steve Kerr has made it clear that he wants Brandon Podziemski to have significant minutes in the rotation and be a consistent contributor for the Golden State Warriors right off the bat, so this is a player that's expected to be a lot of play. If you're asking me, you may not be, but my opinion is that I would have traded Brandon Podziemski for Lori Markkinen, there's no doubt about it in my mind. But that's just the facilitator role he is, and if Golden State is looking at him as the true replacement for Chris Paul after this season, maybe that's what they were trying to do. Chris Paul will play out the final season of his contract in 2024-2025, to and after that, Golden State will have to figure out a long-term plan for not only their starting point guard, but their backup as well. It's possible that Brandon Podziemski ends up being the answer to that. I personally wouldn't have, but it's obvious that Golden State is extremely excited to see Brandon Podziemski in action and see what he can do for this Warriors team. That's the same with Jonathan Kuminga, someone who really came into the offseason with a chip on his shoulder. Golden State has been pushing Jonathan Kuminga around the league for over a year now, and he hasn't been able to get any deals done. He had some great games and regular seasons, didn't really get any playing time in the playoffs, but he had some brilliant moments for Golden State, and now Golden State believes he's a top-tier prospect. 
Steve Kerr has said many times over the past week that they see Kuminga as someone who is on the cusp of a big leap and someone who will be a big part of the rotation, so that's the mindset Golden State has. Because they chose not to trade Laurie Markkinen, not to trade Jonathan Kuminga for Laurie Markkinen, and they're really investing in his potential. Look at Jonathan Kuminga's season last year, 9.9 .9 points, 3.5 rebounds, just under one assist, while shooting 52% from the field and 37% from three. That's a very solid foundation for Kuminga, someone who is really at a point where he can make a big difference on this Warriors team, and if that's the case, Kuminga could have a big role for the Warriors in the 2024 to 2025 season. After all, we know it's time for the Warriors to consider a risky move. For years, the Warriors have played conservatively, re-signing their veteran stars while spending draft picks on young prospects. That was the two-timeline strategy championed by owner Joe Lacob. While it brought them victory in the 2022 NBA Finals, it proved inadequate to sustain their dynasty. The upcoming offseason looms as a critical juncture for the Golden State Warriors, poised to reshape the trajectory of the franchise. Will they commit to one last championship run or opt for a financial restructuring? Mike Dunleavy Jr. and the front office face a daunting array of choices, leaving fans eager to learn what the team's next moves will be. The anticipation surrounding Golden State's future is intensifying. Before we wrap up, be sure to subscribe to the channel. After all, as we said earlier, we're producing Warriors videos almost every day. Thanks for watching, see you tomorrow on Gold-Blooded News. In conclusion, the future looks uncertain for the Golden State Warriors. With the possibility of losing and adding players to the team and the various trade options available, the Warriors are well positioned to continue being a force to be reckoned with in the NBA. Stay tuned for more updates on the Warriors and remember to support by leaving your opinion in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to know when I send new news. Thank you for following Gold Blooded News. A hug and see you next time. We're Gold Blooded! Go Dubs!